Hello, I'm Beth Martin from the Burlington Garden Center. Let me first say that I am sorry to not be able to present what was a PowerPoint to all of you in person. I miss seeing your smiling faces. But we at Burlington Garden Center plan on updating you regularly in a way that is safe for all of us during this challenging time in our lives. I hope everyone stays healthy and happy and away from COVID-19. So a small bit about me, my husband and I are honey beekeepers and we also provide the sassy bee honey to the store. Um, I planted in the greenhouses on Friday, and let me say, the greenhouses are looking spectacular. I can't believe how fast things are growing and how unbelievably beautiful it all looks. I'm excited for all of you to get to see it. But what we're doing today is we're getting to know spring mason bees and how to raise them. So this PowerPoint was provided by Crown Bees, and they are a supplier of, um, of bees and products for bees. And I have left it as they have structured it. At the end of this video, there will be a, uh, an opportunity for a break, and then there will be a second video where we will discuss mason bees and other pollinators in more detail. And since I made that video, I will show you a few things not to do with mason bees. <laughs> so don't be like Beth, and you can learn from my mistakes. And if you occasionally hear something that sounds like a loud bark in the background, it could be my parrot or it could be one of my two dogs. So hopefully they won't be too disruptive. So here we go. So crown bees are native bee experts. They've been in the program for 10 years now raising mason bees and figuring out the best way to be successful with them. This is part of their education and outreach program in an effort to grow more food for more people. A bit about crown bees. Uh, crown bees are native whole nesting bee experts. Crown bees headquarters are in Woodville, Woodville, Washington, sorry, and our bees and supplies are sold nationwide. They have a passion for education about our native bees and raising awareness through outreach. Their mission is to grow more food for more people by raising native bees. So the garden to farm to table movement. You raise the bees, give them to crown bees, and then they give the bees that you raise to farmers who then grow food for you. Bee diversity is a powerful but often overlooked natural way for us to grow more food. We can diversify our bee portfolio by raising spring mason and summer leaf cutter bees. And as we raise our bees, we can support native wild bees. At the end of this presentation, you'll learn how you raising mason bees helps farmers and helps other bees. So who are native bees? Honey bees were brought from Europe for their honey and wax production. The world is home to 21,000 or more bee species, and those are just the bee species that have been scientifically named and cataloged. North America is home to about 4,000 native bee species. Honeybees represent only seven species. You can get to know our native bees with this wonderful book that Crown Bees carries called The Bees in Your Backyard. It's like an encyclopedia about uh, native bees. And you can probably already guess that I own it. Our native bees are original, are the original and best pollinators of our local flowers because they evolved to work with our plants and climates. So are all bees social bees? No, actually only 10% of bee species are social bees that live in hives and 90% of the rest of the world's bee species are solitary, hiveless bees. Social bees are the exception and not the rule for bee lifestyle. Notice how honeybees are a very thin slice of our bee pie chart. That is a 0.0003%. And if you did not know, honeybees are actually not native to North America. They are European honeybees. They were brought over by our early settlers. So what does the word solitary mean and how do solitary bees live? 
With solitary bee species, each bee works alone and they don't live in a colony or a hive. No colony to protect means that solitary bees species tend to be really gentle bees. Our mason bees have very mild venom and it's similar to a mosquito bite. Every solitary female bee is fertile and she does all the chores. The female bees gather nectar and pollen, build nests, and lay eggs. Because they work alone, they tend to not spend a lot of time flying long distances. Today, we are going to get to know mason bees. There are actually a few hundred different species of bees that are called mason bees, and they share these features. They are native to here, so they are acclimated to our weather patterns. They're solitary, they don't live in a hive. They are whole nesting bees, and they are super pollinators. And yes, we have them here in Wisconsin. Our favorite mason bee that you are going to learn how to raise is called a spring mason bee, also known as a blue orchard mason bee. Its scientific name, if I can say this correctly, is Osima lignaria, and it's a native across North America. They are active in early spring and they fly in cooler weather than honeybees. Their activity matches perfectly with fruit and nut trees and many berry plants. Even though they love fruit trees, they are generalists, which means they love all flowers. They are excellent cross-pollinators, and those of you with fruit trees know how important cross-pollination can be. Crown bees, mason bees, are 100 times more effective pollinators than honeybees, and there are a few different reasons why. The social honeybee has to feed a huge population of developing bees, and there are sometimes more than 1,000 eggs laid per day. The solitary mason bee only lays about 25 eggs over her adult lifetime. The social bee's large population means they have to fly further away from the hive to find fresh sources of pollen. The honey bee doesn't want to drop any pollen, so they clean themselves off and pack pollen wet on special hind-legged pockets. Honey bees are excellent long-distance pollen carriers. Solitary bees are usually efficient because they have to do everything and only fly about 300 feet from their bee house every day. Solitary bees don't mind leaving the pollen loose and dry, and mason bees carry pollen on special hairs on their bellies, which is a nice large surface area when they visit flowers. Mason bees are excellent pollen spreaders. Put a mason bee house up where you need them to work and feel confident that they are working nearby. Another reason why mason bees are excellent pollinators is due to their pollination flight habits. Social honeybees are really sophisticated. They are organized because they communicate with each other about pollen sources and they are very thorough. A honeybee will go back to the hive and back to a particular tree it was working on earlier. Honeybees are good long distance pollinators and their flight patterns are similar to OCD. The term bee line comes from honeybee habits after all. Solitary mason bees can do what they want. They're working alone and they can meander to whatever nearby flower they feel is worth visiting. They flit between trees and they are very clumsy when they land on a flower. They are excellent cross-pollinators and their flight patterns are similar to ADD. They are rogue agents that are excited by shiny new flowers. You can grow at least two to three times more food with our mason bees. Notice how it looks like every flower turned into fruit and that's no small task considering that flowers have to be visited multiple times just to make fruit. So a quote from people who have the mason bees is, this is what our plum trees look like after two pickings. Pretty good harvest for this fall. Our Asian pear trees have been thinned twice and we still have too many pears. That's a nice problem to have. 
Now we know that mason bees are awesome pollinators, but where do they live? Their home is called a bee house, not a hive. The bee house protects the nesting materials called nesting holes. Mason bees like to nest in pre-made holes since they don't have time to build a new nesting hole. You don't have to worry about them causing damage. Spring mason bees prefer holes that are about 8 millimeter in diameter. Each female bee is going to claim one nesting hole as her own. She'll mark it with her scent and she usually fills about two nesting holes over her lifetime. For hole nesting bees, we can easily provide nesting holes, raise the bees, and share the bees with farmers and friends. What is inside of a nesting hole? Instead of making honey, each mother bee is going to gather nectar and pollen and put it together into a pollen loaf to feed each egg. The pollen loaf is just the right size to feed the egg until it becomes an adult. Inside the nesting hole are a series of nesting chambers and they're all in a line. The nesting chamber is made up of protective walls, a pollen loaf, and a single egg. The mother bee starts working at the back of the nesting hole and moves forward. When she's done with the nesting hole, she builds a capped end. It's the name of the protective extra thick wall that's on the outside edge. We've gotten to know mason bees and now we're going to learn the important steps for how to raise them. We have a lot of resources that I will cover at the end and can give you all the details. We care about your success. Spring mason bees are really gentle, effective pollinators that are easy to raise. They are gentle because they are solitary and laid back. They don't have time to bother you. They are effective pollinators because they carry pollen dry and loose on their bellies. They are easy to raise because they hibernate in cocoons and live in nesting holes. They don't live in a hive. There's no honey upkeep or need for fancy equipment. To take care of mason bees, all you have to do is step outside. We need to know how the mason bee life cycle works so that we can raise them. When the weather warms to about 50 degrees, the bees start to emerge from their cocoons. They've been hibernating as adults and they are ready to go and soon, as soon as the weather is consistently warm. The male mason bees emerge, they chew their way out first and they usually fly away and wait for the female bees to emerge. The female bees mate and then start building their nest. A male mason bee's adult lifespan is only about two weeks. A female mason bee's adult lifespan is four to six weeks. Female bees mate, build nests, gather pollen, and lay eggs. The eggs that were laid this spring hatch right away and the larvae grow, slowly grow and eat their pollen loaves. It can take several weeks for bees to develop and finish eating their loaf. There are some pauses in development, but by late summer each egg has, has spun a cocoon and develops into an adult bee. The cocoon they spun is waterproof, and this is an important fact that helps us raise them. They hibernate over the winter as adults inside their cocoons, and they are surviving off stored fats. There is only one generation per season, and the bees are only actively flying as adults during the spring. Here is an overview of the steps you will take to raise the bees. Many of the steps in this chart take at most 10 minutes. Harvesting the cocoons in the fall can take about 30 minutes or longer. When your blooms are open and the weather is warm, you put your cocoons into the bee house. This is called releasing cocoons. Waiting and watching the female bees come and go is a lot of fun and the time you spend watching them really doesn't count as a chore. They are adorable. As soon as the female bees are done laying eggs, you want to remove and protect filled nesting holes, and I will explain why this is very important. You will store the filled nesting holes in a warm place over the summer. 
In Washington state, we harvest our mason bee cocoons in October. Harvesting cocoons is when you open the nesting holes and remove the mason bee cocoons. It's a little messy and you'll find some interesting things and it's a great activity to do with children and friends. You will store the cocoons over winter in your refrigerator and this helps keep the bees healthy. Good nesting hole design is really important for your mason bees. Crown Bees, using our years of expertise, designs our nesting holes with the health of the bees in mind. Our nesting materials are made of natural, locally available materials. Our lake reeds are harvested in Utah. They are not bamboo. Our nesting holes are the right diameter for mason bees and they are the right length. You can get a natural gender ratio of your bees when the nesting holes are the right length about six male to four female bees. Avoid nesting holes that are much too large and nesting holes too short, which can lead to female nesting chambers being exposed. Our nesting holes are breathable because we know pollen loss is moist from nectar, so we don't use plastic straws or plastic trays because all of these are not breathable. Our nesting holes are easy to open to harvest cocoons in the fall. You can't open drilled blocks of wood or bamboo, which can splinter and hurt you and the bees. Pictures are of our lake reeds, bee tubes, and guard tubes with inserts left to right. Now we start learning about what you're doing with your bees. These holes are our reusable wooden nesting trays, which are easy to open and use every year. First, you need to pick a spot to install your bee house. Choose a sturdy wall or fence. The bees don't like swinging in the wind. Install on a south or southeast facing location so that the morning sun gives the bees energy to start flying. Bees are cold blooded. Install about your eye level so you can easily see into the bee house and watch them come and go. Don't put the bee house on the ground where critters like raccoons can bother the bees. Set out your eight millimeter nesting holes for mason bees. When the weather is 55 degrees, your flowers are open, set your mason bee cocoons in the house. Keep their cocoons out of direct sunlight. You can put them towards the back of the nesting holes or in the house's attic. Your female bees are flying and you need to ensure that they have mud to build those protective walls between nesting chambers. If the bees can't find mud in your yard, they will not nest in your bee house. You can take a trowel or shovel or check your soil to see if you have um, already have clayey mud. You can open the soil, the bees like a vertical location to gather mud and see if it is the right consistency for the bees. Get the soil wet and see if it sticks together like clay. If it doesn't stick together, you can add our Mason Bee Mud Mix to your open patch of soil. In arid places like the desert or in a rooftop garden, you can use our Mason Bee Mud Box to help keep the mud source wet. And we all know that that's not something we need to do here in Wisconsin. They find mud. Why do we ask you to remove and protect the filled nesting holes over summer? After the female bees are done nesting, the chubby larvae are attractive to parasitic wasps and scavenging insects. Both of these pests are able to punch through mud walls or cracks in the nesting holes. Parasitic wasps lay eggs inside the plump bee larva, and the picture in the upper right is a set of some type of wasp inside a mason bee cocoon. They're also known as mono wasps. And to be honest with you, I didn't even try to say their name. Um, when you remove the filled nesting holes, you are protecting the bee larva from pests. Put the filled nesting holes into our bee guard bag and the fine mesh will keep those pests out. We're always following nature's temperature, so store the protective nesting holes in an unheated garage or shed over the summer. When you do this, you are protecting your baby bees.
In the fall, when you will harvest your mason bee cocoons, um, there are four good reasons to harvest those cocoons. One, chalk brood is a deadly fungal infection that the mother bee picked up on flowers. The larva eats the spores, gets sick, sick, and dies and becomes a mass of more fungal spores. Two, pollen mites are also picked up on flowers and the mites will eat the pollen loaf faster than the larva can and the larva dies. When you don't harvest cocoons, a healthy mason bee will walk through an infected nesting chamber and spread the disease or pest. These bees are not able to clean and remove chalk brood or pollen mites. The picture on the right is of a mason bee covered in pollen mites, which are weighing him down. Three, we talked about mono, the parasitic wasp, in the last slide. You can reduce mono during the, the harvesting step. Four, you won't know how many healthy, healthy mason bee cocoons you have if you don't harvest them. Taking inventory of your cocoons is a good way to know if you have enough extra cocoons to share with friends and neighbors. After harvesting cocoons, you are going to store them over the winter in your refrigerator. The fridge has a consistent low temp, and that helps your adult hibernating bees conserve their fat. But our fridges are frost-free, and this removes humidity, which can dry out and kill our cocoons. To solve this problem, we have Humidibe, a special container that keeps cocoons moist but not soaking wet. Once a month, you will add a tablespoon of water to the Humidibe. When you harvest mason bee cocoons, you need to participate in Crown Bees Bee Buyback Program, which is a garden to farm program. We need more mason bee cocoons to send to our farms. All you have to do is harvest your mason bee cocoons and send us your extra cocoons. You can exchange cocoons for new nesting tubes, reeds, gift certificates, or even cash. We will share your cocoons with new gardeners and farmers. You don't have to memorize the steps for raising mason bees. A super easy way to know what to do each month is to sign up for bee mail. Signing up is free and we have a great new primer course that helps you get to know our bees and the quick steps for raising them. Bee mail is sent twice a month. First of the month, mason bee plus leaf cutter bees tips and reminders. Mid month, native bee news, learn about your bee hotel guests. Each month, we look, tell you what your bees are doing and what you are doing to take care of them. We highlight important news about native bees, and it's a great way to know about our discounts and promotions. Signing up is easy. Just go to crownbees.com backslash female. We have other great resources to help you with our bees. Our website is full of information. We have wonderful how-to videos that will show you how to take care of your bees. We are big on social media, especially Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Our Mason Bee Revolution book is a great in-depth guidebook for how to raise mason bees and our summer leaf cutter bees. If you are local to Woodville, Washington, you can come to our harvest party in October where we will teach you what to look for as you harvest cocoons. So this is our recap about the spring mason bee. So we've learned everything we can about them at this point. And if you need to rewatch this video, if some of it has gotten by you or you want to reflect on it a little more, you can rewatch it. Um, some of the material that you've seen in this video um, are products that are at Burlington Garden Center right, right now. So if you want to take a break, there will be another video available to you now that this one is over. And we can talk more about native bees that are particular to Wisconsin.